सो आई हैव टू टर्म्स नाउ इन न्यूट्रॉन दिस फ्लक्चुएशन टर्म इज जीरो फॉर एक्स रेज सो इफ आई कंसिडर सम स्कैटरिंग लेंथ फॉर एक्स रेज इट इज सेम एवरीवेयर एंड देर इज नो फ्लक्चुएशन इट इज जीरो सो देर इज नो इनकोरेंट स्कैटरिंग but in case of neutrons it is not so and now i will go ahead and show you how to do it so there is no angle dependence for this so now we can experimentally find out the scattering length of an isotope which has got a concentration ck then the averaging depends on the concentration and it is simply ck bk if bk is the scattering cross section of one isotope its concentration ck so it is sum over ck bk sum over the entire concentration and similarly b average b square average nothing but if the bk is the scattering length for an isotope with concentration ck then is square is the square average of the square so let me just write it down <clears throat> so if b average is nothing but concentration ck of an isotope and its scattering length bk and b average b square average is equal to same sum on the square of that square of them uh, and this i can calculate the diffraction from this and this. also i will talk about the spin now no let me write it down okay let me derive it in case of spin suppose the nucleus has a spin i and the neutron has a spin r so we know from quantum mechanics twice s plus 1 at the possible states actually in our bachelor's we know we found out the mg values by this so now you have twice i nuclear spin is either parallel to neutron or anti parallel plus 1 so when you take Plus one is two into one plus one. It is twice i plus two, and when minus of it is twice i. Twice i. So total is four i plus two possibilities. So when it is nuclear and neutron spin are parallel. Then you have i plus half. Then the possible states, spin states are twice i plus two. And when they are anti-parallel, then the possible state twice i. And these are the weight factors because when they are parallel, let us consider the scattering length is b plus. <coughs> and when they are anti-parallel, let us call it b minus. Then. i have b average for spin will be equal to now weightage for the if you see this total number of states are 4i plus 2 the weightage for the plus means spin and nuclear spin parallel is twice i plus 2 so it will be twice twice i plus 2 upon 4 i plus 2 with respect to the total weight this is the weightage and when the scattering length is plus plus when the anti parallel it is twice i twice i 
divided by 4i plus 2 <coughs> and then the scattering length b minus. Don't ask me the question how we find out b plus and b minus. Yes, we have to do a very elaborate experiment. We have to make the neutron polarization parallel to the polarization of the nucle nucleus and then we have to do it. But right now, theoretically, if this is the case, then you have the averaging over the spin is given by when the nuclear spin is I. Very simple algebra. Now we have the case where you have the isotopes and the spins. So if I consider an isotope kth isotope with spin ik, uh, please excuse me because uh, the, there is a capital and small letter, but this is the same as the capital I that I was writing in the blackboard. So if the so we take the concentration ck of the kth isotope with with nuclear spin ik, then ik plus 1 upon twice ik plus 1 into bk plus plus ik upon twice ik plus 1 bk minus. So this is the expression for b average and same way the b square average is that only I put square of these terms and weightage are the same. So. <coughs> So now B average equal to, let me write explicitly, concentration of the spin with, uh, with the isotope, with concentration CK, spin IK, IK plus 1. <clears throat> this is for B average and same way for B score average. I'll just put dots there. So I can calculate B average and B square average for a distribution of isotopes and spins with kth isotope having concentration CK and spin IK. So this is the expression, <clears throat> adding the isotope and spin in our formalism. Now, for example, I have just written down here the B plus for the most common isotope which is hydrogen. Hydrogen has a B plus of 1.04 in the of minus 14 and B minus minus 4.74 into 10 to the minus 14. Uh, I request you to calculate the coherent and incoherent scattering cross section for proton using these values. Let me just do a few lines for you so that uh, you became, become familiar with this. <coughs> So it is the simplest calculation because proton has a spin half, neutron has a spin half, so twice i plus 1 is 3 and twice i is 1, so the spin weightage is a 3 and 1. 
so i am telling you to do the spin average scattering cross section so what you need to do is actually now three fourths into b plus plus one fourth into b minus so which is equal to three fourths 1.04 into 10 to the power minus 14 meters Fourteen, and uh, other one is minus four point seven four. This is minus one fourth. Four point seven four into ten to the power minus fourteen meters. Now you can see that uh, this is subtracting from each other. Question comes: How come a scattering length is negative? Right now, I'll request you to accept it. In case of neutrons. It is possible to have positive and negative scattering length because of certain nuclear constraints. I will, if possible, I will try to explain it later. Otherwise, I will request you to accept this. And because of this, you will find sigma coherent, which is equal to 4 pi into b average square. In this case, it will come out to be something like uh, 6.42 barns. One barn equal to 10 to the power minus 24 centimeter square. And the sigma incoherent equal to 4 pi which is you can have to also evaluate b square average in the same way I did it and you will find it will be coming around 80 bars. So now you see so sigma incoherent for hydrogen is much much larger than sigma coherent. <coughs> So what it means? That means hydrogen is a very strong scatterer. Hydrogen is a strong scatterer. No doubt about it. Is a very strong scatterer, but it scatters incoherently. So for a diffraction experiment, hydrogen is not so suitable. Go back. So I will just show you with this coherent and incoherent part. The coherent part, as I am repeatedly telling you, it has got Q dot RL minus RL prime, and it has, if you do an experiment, if the material has large coherent cross section, then you will find these coherent peaks. But incoherent one, which is 4 pi b square average minus b average square does not have an angle dependence, it gives an incoherent background. Because of this, if we use hydrogenous material, you will find that in your experiment, you have got a very large background and possibly the coherent peaks are just about rising on top of them. So, <coughs> this is a disadvantage of doing Diffraction experiments with hydrogen. It doesn't mean hydrogen is not used. Hydrogen also used in some of the sc scattering experiments. And also, some of you may be aware that H2O is a very strong moderator because it very strongly scatters neutrons and thermal neutrons and can cause very efficient thermal thermalization of neutrons because it has got a very large cross section overall, which is around. 80 bars, 81 bars. So with this, I stop the module where I have introduced you to the coherent and incoherent scattering cross section for neutrons. In the next part, I will show you a comparison between 
neutrons and x rays because x rays are are most commonly used microscopic probe almost all of us and then i will stop today